this video will give you some hints as to how to interpret the velocity versus time graph for the gravity lab. Previously, we have deduced g from measurements of distance and time using direct kinematic calculations. We made multiple measurements at different heights and then just calculated the average and standard deviation to analyze the accuracy and precision of the experiment and then look for sources of error, both systematic and random. This time we will do an error analysis but using a slightly different method. We start by creating a table of average times from those heights versus final velocity. From this, we can construct a velocity versus time graph, create a best fit line through it, and have our spreadsheet software calculate the R squared value. Note that for simplicity of representation, we have flipped the velocity to be positive downward. The slope of the best fit line is going to give us the value of g. You can then compare this to the true value of 9.8 meters per second squared to make claims about accuracy. The y-intercept not shown on the line would be an estimated initial velocity at time equals zero. However, because we know that the drop started from rest, the more physical meaning of any offset non-zero intercept is an offset in time instead. Provided your data is consistent, this can reveal a systematic delay in starting the timer or the drop relative to each other. In this example, it seems like the drop was delayed up to about 0.1 seconds after the timer has started. To check for consistency of values, your spreadsheet can calculate an R squared value for you. This is similar in concept to standard deviation, but its value is a non-dimensional number between zero and one. Values close to one 
mean that the data points are relatively a good fit to the calculated line. Values close to zero means that the line is not a good predictor of the data. As usual, if the data is consistent but inaccurate, you should be looking for systematic sources of error. Let's quickly practice this on the sample data from the other groups. According to this result, lab group B had a more accurate data that was still very consistent. Their intercept value was also very low, and hence this group's results are quantitatively better in accuracy and consistency than the previous group. Lab group D's results, despite having the calculation errors hinted in the previous video, still show high level of accuracy and consistency. Nevertheless, because their values are noticeably different from the other groups, they still need to go back and do their calculations over to construct a more justifiable graph. Lab group C was the group that had a highly accurate average, but very unreliable, inconsistent data. This becomes even more magnified in the graph because the graph relies on making a best fit line based on the combination of the trend from all three data points. Their graph is unreliable because it is inaccurate for slope, intercept, and the R squared value close to zero shows that the data is completely inconsistent. So which method is better? Direct calculation and averaging or the graph method. As we have seen, the answer only becomes clearer with more data. With enough data, both methods will give you more accurate answers or better justifications on sources of error. The graph method, however, because it uses the fit through the trend through the data, 
as opposed to indiscriminate averaging does give more information as discussed about the time intercept.